Oh, wait, I was recording. Crap. Okay. It's not recording, stay recording. Okay. <laughs> okay, so for everyone in the chat, welcome. Um, I'm doing something new. Usually I just do this on my webcam by myself uh, or another camera, but I figured the pay per view just ended. So let's try out Twitch. Let's see if uh, anyone wants to get on the discussion. So we have uh, Purple Freak 3 in the chat who said it was a horrible event. I'm going to put it as passable. There were things I liked and there were things I didn't like. So that's what we're here to do. I'm going to open up my notes and also the results because it was a three-hour show. I can't remember everything. I'm buffering a lot. Um, everything looks okay here. I'm green, so... I don't know, I'm, everything's uploading okay. I was just going to make sure uh, uh, we might be updating something. And we just close stuff like, uh, yeah. Okay, hopefully that helps. Okay, so the pre-show was uh, Golden Stardust versus The New Day, which is the new faction between Xavier Woods, Biggie, and Kofi Kingston, which everyone thought they were going to be heel, because Xavier came out with like a white suit and was doing all the preaching stuff, and he's just like, oh, the man's going to take all this stuff away from us, and I kind of think they kind of nixed the trigger on that when Ferguson happens, they're just like, yeah, we need a positive uh, African-American faction, so here you go, they got New Day, they're all in blue, and they're just like, I don't know, I never wa I didn't watch it, I just heard that they went over, so. Could it possibly be setting up Gold Dust versus Stardust? Or could uh, Cody Rhodes just go back to being Cody Rhodes and say, you know, fuck this, I'm going to take you out, Gold Dust? And then Gold Dust, they'll have their, you know, sought after match that they've always wanted at Mania, and then they'll kind of quietly go off into the sunset. That might happen. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but yeah, they say on the pre-show that Ziggler and Luke Harper are going to, um, open up the show, so, so yeah, that's a ladder match for the Intercontinental title, it's Dolph Ziggler versus Luke Harper, who is the current champion, um, let's see here, what do I have for notes, um, someone had a higher Russo sign in the crowd, no, we don't need Russo back in pro wrestling ever again. I mean, he drew in the college crowd with the boobs and the blood and the swearing, but we need to get kids back involved. Then we can do boobs, blood, and swearing again. We're still a few years off from going, reverting away from PG again, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, things, I'm, things I noted. Um, Ziggler, of course, took a lot of bumps like a boss. Um, there were some really nasty ones, though, because... They do always see the spot where they push the ladder over, but you're supposed to, like, you know, hang yourself on the top rope. He doesn't seem to do that a lot. He just kind of, like, he, like, catches it and just kind of floats over. It's just like, ah, I'm hurt. Ever. Um, I tweeted out, Jesus Harper, nasty bump. Because they did this spot where Ziggler had the ladder on the outside and Luke Harper did a suicide dive. And he, like, kind of got stuck in the ladder and it crushed down. And that's, like, the... That's, like, the first real emotion I've ever seen out of this guy. Because, like, most of the time, like, he'll, like, hit a guy and then he'll just be, like, the whole... I'm crazy. Look at the crazy eyes. But he was just like, motherfucker, my arm hurts. Ref's checking on him. He's like, okay, I'm okay. I was like, ah, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Ziggler uh, regains his IC belt. He's now a four-time IC champion. I was okay with this match. I mean... There weren't any new innovative spots that I saw other than that suicide dive. It was fine. I mean, now they have to keep the bow on Ziggler because they've been kind of ping-ponging it back and forth between him and Miz and now him, Harper and, and, and him. Like, he won it, like, the week before the Survivor Series because, like, in the last night of the Authority's Authority, and they're just like, fuck you, we're going to, you know, beat you down and uh, take the belt. So, uh... Oh, yeah, I also tweeted out wrestling gifts. I don't know how this guy operates and how fast he goes, because, like, it was just, like, bam. Like, as soon as the spot happens, he's got a gif already up on here. Oh, okay, so there was... I forgot about this. Ziggler bladed. Like, he, they did, like, a seesaw spot where they, he put, like, 
for some reason this year they had baby ladders, so they were like five feet, like you know five feet nothing. Like why would you have them? You're not gonna climb a ladder, get a belt with that. So he sandwiched them in there, and he did like a slingshot spot from the bottom and second rope, and Ziggler bladed. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's how you're gonna win over the NXT crowd or the NXT audience now is you're gonna blade again. Well, go on it. Uh, at all, as I said, uh, new IC champ need to update my 2K15 saves. Uh, let's see what was after that. Next page was. Oh, they cut to a promo for a tribute to the troops, and it's that Florida whatever that shitty country music band that they have a song in 2K15 that I automatically mute. I was like, I have to listen to this again. Well, I guess they're promoting tribute to the huge, which I think has lost its luster and has lost its flair now that we're or now that the U.S. is no longer at war with Iraq or Afghanistan. I mean, you killed Saddam, you killed Bin Laden. I mean, it's a nice little thank you, and you know, it's all that pro USA, you know, bullshit. But like. Like, it, it, it was cool because, like, they sent people, they, they sent a ring and they sent a bunch of shit to Afghanistan. They did shows outside. So it was it was a different atmosphere. It was a different vibe. And wrestlers got paid a shit ton. Um, I remember um, one of my buddies uh, who wrestles locally here. Um, if you guys know Rene, if you remember Rene Dupree from La Resistance and... The guy he ended up wearing white tights and said he was going to be the most extreme athlete in ECW, and all he, the most extreme thing he did was like Sabu shit, like springboards off the bottom rope. But uh, still, uh, Rene came in and he was talking about how much he got paid to go to Iraq, and it was like in the six figures. And he says for one show, Vince pays you six figures to go, and it's like completely voluntary. I think some guys chose not to go. They're just like, you know what? I'll save the money. I'll just, you know, I'll stay home. Uh, so I have, yeah, fuck that country song. I muted it from 2K15 for a reason. Uh, so yeah, after that, uh, tag match it. Uh, the Usos versus uh, the Miz and Mizdow, which uh, it's pretty funny now that um, Miz gets to hold the title belts and the tr and the, the slammy that Mizdow won. So he has to go out and get his own little mini replica uh, slammy and replica belts. Now, I see a lot of people on Twitter going like, oh, fuck this, fuck this gimmick, it's so stupid. It's like, no, this is, and I tweeted this out, this is, this is the thing. This is a guy who, who took, like, he was being shat on for months, being put with stupid imitation gimmicks. Then he gets one that he just has to constantly do, and he's one of the most over people in the company right now. Like, he's the type of person that is that the people on NXT are doing. Like, I'm comparing him to the NXT guys, because the NXT guys, they're busting their ass, they're having great matches, and people are going out touting, saying that the TakeOver shows are way better than other pay-per-views. And you know what? They are. Like... Ms. Dow is the one guy that gives a shit. And he's the guy that, you know, he doesn't wrestle all that much. But he's entertaining the crowd. He's getting them involved. That's what you got to do. Not only can you, you have to be a good wrestler, you have to get the crowd involved. Um, other streams are working. Okay, someone's, someone's in the chat right now saying, other streams are working fine, but for me, you keep buffering every few seconds. Uh, don't know what to tell you. Everything's okay here. Um... Uh, well, other streams have, you know, better computers, so. I seem to be doing okay. Um, so, yeah, it's it's your typical tag match with uh, Ms. Dow, you know. Everyone's more focused on Ms. Dow than anything else. And he's, you know, copying all the spots, entertaining the crowd. Um, they're adding in this plot now with Trinity or Naomi, where it's like, I can get you a talent agency. You can do all this stuff and... You know, just pissing off the husband, doing psycho shit, or psychotic, not psychotic, was uh, psychological, psychological stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, so they actually, uh, Miz actually gets them intentionally disqualified, hits them with the belt, and you know what, usually disqualifications, I'm pissed at at a pay-per-view, I'm fine with this, because you know what, it's just going to continue the feud, um, 
it's either going to break up the Usos or it's finally going to break up Miz and Miz Dow. Um, maybe at the Royal Rumble, we'll see. They might get put in the Royal Rumble and uh, Miz Dow will uh, chuck... Um, he'll chuck um, uh, Miz out and then that'll lead to the, the breakup. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I tweet out, Miz Dow's the one guy in the main roster that gives a shit. Nice DQ finish? I'm okay with this. Okay, so they're doing this promo backstage with... Um, um, with Seth Rollins and J and J Security, Joy Mercury and Jamie Noble, and he's talking about like the past month. He's just like, I'm dedicating this to Triple H and Stephanie because they can't be here. I'm gonna force John Cena to bring them back, and the reason that they're not here is because of the Vigilante Sting. I'm like, that's the name you're gonna give him, the Vigilante Sting. I mean, he's the icon Sting, or the Stinger. Like, I'm not really behind this whole visual anti-Sting uh, moniker. I don't know if I'll ever get behind it. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. This is what I took half of a piss break for. The stairs match. They go down the stat of the stairs. I said stat of stairs. I was like... They can support 2,200 pounds. The po top part weighs 85 pounds, and the bottom part weighs 160 pounds. No, they don't. They're hollow as fuck. And anyone can pick them up. Probably an 8-year-old could pick them up. That's how weak they are. So, rather than bore you, quick review. It sucked. The match sucked. Should never have been there. The crowd was bored. They were bored to the tears. I tweeted out, end this match. End this match. I actually heard people starting NXT chants. Saying, fuck you Big Show and Eric Rowan. This match sucks. So, I figured, rather than bore you with... Um, the, the the crappiness of this match. I'm actually going to put a picture up uh, in this stream. If I can find it. And we're going to go over the... Oh, yeah, I can put this in. Okay. This is a... No, this is my photo. Um, not even really a photo. It's text. Um, but it's something we got off Reddit. And someone that tweeted out after Survivor Series. Now, this doesn't include his time in WCW. This is just his WWE debut. So, from 99 February at the St. Valentine's Day Massacre to Survivor Series, I give you the definitive history of Big Show heel turns. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> uh, can I move it? Alright. So, I'm going to plug my mug here for a second. Um, can't see my thing here, but we're going to go from top to button. So, he came in as a heel, initially as Paul White, to help Vince McMahon defeat Stone Cold Steve Austin, and that failed. He then turned face to join the Union. I don't know what the Union was. That was probably post-WrestleMania. But then he turned heel to join The Undertaker as a heel tag team. He then turned face to feud with the big boss man. Because when his quote-unquote dad died in that year, kayfabe-wise, Paul White's father passed away years before he started pro wrestling. He turned heel when he came back at the 2000 Royal Rumble. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, he was still with the company. He turned heel at the 2000 Royal Rumble because... He was one of the guys that The Rock didn't appreciate calling a jabroni. Or, he didn't appreciate The Rock calling him a jabroni. He's like, I'm not a jabroni on the big show. Then he turned face after WrestleMania when he began mocking other wrestlers. He turned heel after attacking The Undertaker and siding with Shane O'Mac. He turned face during the WCW, NWO, or, sorry, WCW, ECW invasion. And then he turned heel after WrestleMania 18 by joining the NWO. He turned face 
returning in 2004 to feud with Kurt Angle. Then he turned heel while teaming with Kane, feuding with SmackDown guys Mysterio and Batista. I don't even remember that turn. Turned face during feud with Triple H after New Year's Resolution, Revolution 2006. Turned heel when he became ECW champion. He left WWE for a year. He returned in February 2000 face at No Way Out as a face, but immediately turned heel when he attacked Mysterio and got in the face of Floyd Mayweather. Then he turned face after 2000, or, uh, WrestleMania 24 to feud with the Great Khali. He turned heel by siding with Vicky Guerrero in their feud against The Undertaker. He turned face by knocking out Miz after Show Miz lost her tag titles. He turned heel at Over the Limit by knocking out John Cena and allowing John Laurinaitis to win his match. He turned face in early 2013 by attacking The Shield. He turned heel by knocking out Sheamus and Orton after losing to The Shield at WrestleMania 29. He returned as a face in August to fight The Shield. He briefly turned heel, knocking out uh, faces for the Order of the Authority. He turned babyface by revealing against the Authority, and then finally turning heel at Survivor Series by knocking out John Cena. So, I'm going to take that off now. That is 18 turns. 18 turns in 15 years. That averages out to a turn every six to seven months. And that's not including WCW, which he was like face, heel, face, heel. Okay, so now that we can regale with that, let's move on to the next match because, again, I said stairs match fucking sucked. No good spots. No one was into it. Not even the announcers. I said, fuck that match, never do it again. So now, it pops up. Okay, coming up next, a tables match. John Cena versus Seth Rollins. If Cena loses, he loses his number one contendership. Um, this is not the main event? So Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose are closing the show? You're not closing your main event with something that directly impacts your world title? A little odd. So, the the story of this match is is that Paul Heyman is at ringside for some reason. And probably monitoring the whole thing. I thought he was going to get involved. He didn't. But the story is, it's basically a three-on-one handicap match. And Michael Cole is losing his shit. It's like... Noble and Noble and Mercury can't be out here. It's like, why not? It's no DQ. Like, okay, uh, I'm looking at chat. Uh, 14 years. Sorry. And and, I, and 19. I'm sorry. Um. Okay, so. Okay, so sorry, I was looking at chat here. So yeah, sorry, sorry, I got corrected. Um, so okay, where were we? Oh yeah, so Michael Cole's freaking out. He's like, it's three on one. Yeah, it's a tables match. It's no DQ. They can be out here. He's like, but it's not right. Like, it's a no DQ match. Who cares? They can be out here. So, we get some spots where every time Cena set up a table or tried to bring a table in, Mercury and Noble would pull it out. Which is fine. That's actually pretty smart. We had back a lot of back and forth moments. Um, I guess to one point there where they actually go up to the outside of the ring. And they're fighting by the entryway. And... Cena actually brings out, uh, they actually get one of those old school uh, barriers. Before they had like the big one with the padding and all that, it had just like this grate. So he brought out a grate and he suplexed uh, Noble onto it. And I had to tweet this out because I saw it was freaking hilarious. JBL name drops Nydia. If you remember back about 10 years ago when Jamie Noble was on SmackDown, Nydia, who was the first uh, tough enough winner on the female side, got put with him and they were a couple. I think he like won the lottery or something. So instead of winning instead of coming out with cut up jorts, he had like Tommy Hilfiger jorts. 
I thought that thought that was a nice nod. You know, bring up the history. Uh, okay, someone in the chat says Rollins couldn't win fairly if he tried. That's the point. He's a heel. He doesn't need to win fairly. That's what everyone freaked out about uh, Hell in a Cell is that he he's like, oh, that was a horrible finish. You know, he didn't win clean. Well, if he won clean, he wouldn't be a heel, would he? He'd be just a regular baby face. Anyway. So we got a spot there where there's a ref bump. And John Cena puts uh, Rollins to a table. But there's no ref to see it. So Noble and uh, Noble and Mercury come out. Beats, beat down Cena. Clear out the evidence. It's like, oh, you never put him out. And they did a good job. They like threw all the pieces out. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't, you didn't do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> So, so out. Uh, so they set up more tables, and it looked like he was gonna put him through with a triple power bomb that like he's been kind of stealing for the last couple of weeks, old Shield stuff. So they actually, they set up two on the outside, and Cena and Rollins go through the table at the same time, right as Mike Hewitt wakes up, and he looks and he asks for the and he asks for the he he asks for the bell, but then he stops and he's just like. Wait, who did it? And then two other referees come out. And they do the whole, like, John Cena won. No, Seth Rollins won. And the whole time, they're replaying the spot on the screen. Like, when they go like, these replays, they're also showing it on the Titantron. So I'm like, can you not look at the screen and see that they both went to the table at the same time? Like, I'm, I'm going back to an episode of SmackDown where The Undertaker and Batista had a steel cage match. And they both got out at the same time. The ref went to Michael Cole and Taz, looked at the monitor, and kept asking the truck to replay the spot. And then said, both of them got out at the exact same time, therefore it's a draw. So, Mike Kyoto's like, fuck you ref, fuck you ref. We're not giving a single winner. Restart the match. And... Then Cena eventually gets to Rollins and gets him to try uh, tries to put him through the announce table. It doesn't break. Rollins rolls over, actually knocks out Cole. Uh, and of course, Matthew will probably put this in botchamania and say it was a botch. Announce table not breaking is not a botch. Because those things are rigged to go off when they are intended to go off. I mean... Triple H attempting the pedigree to Kurt Angle and the table breaking early? Yeah, that's a botch. But it not breaking? Again, not a botch. Get it right, buddy. Okay, someone in the chat asked me uh, the question. Um, how much RKO would it take to get to the Tetsuya Center for Tetsuya Pop? I don't know. Just one? From out of nowhere? Okay, where was I? Uh, Michael Cole bump. Okay, yeah. So we're we're at the fin we're at the finish now. So so Big Show comes out, and it looks like he's gonna put Cena through a table too. And then I'm like, motherfucker, if you guys do, like, if you cause Cena this match, and I have to sit through Big Show versus Cena at Royal Rumble, I will be pissed. Thankfully, that didn't happen. As he was about to choke slam him, Roman Reigns comes back. He returns, Superman punch spears uh, Big Show through the table, ducks the Money in the Bank briefcase, Superman punch, John Cena AA's uh, Rollins to a table, ref actually sees it, and we get Erwinder, so it's now official, Brock Lesnar, Cena at the Royal Rumble, and I find it funny is that they didn't know that Cena was going to win, like, in real life, they didn't know Cena was going to win and retain his number one contendership, but they had the graphic and the promo video already. Because, like, after he wins, it's like, we now know it's John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. It's like, wow, your uh, graphics designers must be really quick on the draw. Anyways, that was that. Um, backstage segment. Brian Saxton, one of the new uh, announcers. He does, sometimes he does play-by-play -play for NXT. Sometimes he ring announced for NXT. Lately, he does main event with Michael Cole, and he's a backstage announcer. He brings in the Divas champion, Nikki Bella, and Brie Bella by her side. 
they say, oh, how do you feel about your match? And it's like, oh, he doesn't have, um, he doesn't, she doesn't have what I have, and I have the women's belt. And then he finally asks the million dollar question. The thing that's been bugging the shit out of people with common sense on Twitter and on wrestling forums and everywhere. It's like, let me ask you, your sister has put you through hell, Brie, for the last few months. Why are you still with this bitch? She's like, look, I'm so sick of this question. Yes, my sister and I have had our issues. She wished you died in the womb! Fuck that bitch! If I had a twin, God forbid he would ever say, I wished you had died in the womb, and i be the only one. I'd be like, okay, we're done. Uh, fuck you at Thanksgiving, fuck you at Christmas, fuck you at everything else. You're dead to me. You wish I died in the womb? Fuck you. We're done. You're not invited to the wedding. You're not invited, you're not my best man. Fuck your bridges. You can. You cannot see my kids. We're done. This is like... <laughs> so, okay, she's, she's okay saying that her sister wishes she was dead. So... Yeah, AJ versus Nikki. They actually gave them some time. I was getting scared because Okay, someone in the... okay, someone in the chat. I wish you died in the womb. Lol, Brian, stop trying to set up, separate us, you dick. I love my sister. Yeah, I love my sister. Tell me she wished death upon me. So, AJ versus Nikki Divas title. I knew um she was not uh retaining or she wasn't getting the belt back. Rumor is is that she is done after tonight. I mean, what does she have? What, what does she need WWE money for? CM Punk's got a multi-fight contract with the UFC now. We'll live off of UFC money now. That is if you know, that is if CM Punk wins. Like, see, with WWE, you get paid no matter what. Oh, of course, according to them on Total Divas, if we're not on TV, we're not making money. You have guaranteed contracts. You have guaranteed money whether you work or not. Like, what do people do when they get injured? What what did what did Evan Bourne do for two years when he was out with, like, a serious foot injury and he was still under contract? You think he's working, he's working at, um, um, you think he, he's working at Walmart in between? No. He's sitting at home resting and he's getting paid to do it. So, it's back and forth, um... They did the whole. Um, she hit Shining Wizard, which is one of her finishers, and of course she's too close to the rope. So Bree puts Nikki's foot on the bottom rope, but the ref caught it, and he did the "You're out of here." And she's like, "What? Come on, ref!" So Bricky, uh, Bricky, Nikki goes to the back, and as the ref's distracted, Nikki pulls out a spray bottle and you know does the Rick Martell to AJ. <laughs> so then she hits the rock attack and retains the belt. See, I was hoping for tonight, Nikki would retain, and in the midst of the celebration, Brie would turn on Nikki. She would turn face again and just be like, well, now Nikki's out of the picture. Boom. Now it's my shot. I'll never forgive that you wish death upon me. At least not for three years. Three-year rule. After three years, it's okay to forgive death. Because 2001, Vince told Shane... I'll never forgive your mother for giving birth to you. And then several years later, they're fighting side by side against DX. Go figure. Wish I was never born? Oh, that's okay. You want to team against uh, DX and then uh, mock God? Sure. <sighs> Chairs match. Ryback versus Kane. I zoned out on this. Uh, what did I tweet? Uh, Kane, why you know wear wrestling tights anymore? This is a solid question. This is a solid question. Because the authorities know more. He's not really corporate Kane anymore. Why are you still wearing long pants? Why are you wearing dress pants to wrestle? You don't have to put the mask back on. I mean... You went for years without a mask, and you still had, like, the red lighting and all that, and you still did the whole... <sighs> with the pyro. You could still do that. Just... Just wear tights. 
like a normal person. Too many people are wearing street clothes now. Luke Harper, Dean Ambrose. I'm sure there's others I'm missing. Kane. You're supposed to be a wrestler. Wrestlers wear tights. Wrestlers wear shorts. Like boy shorts. Biker shorts. Whatever you call them. Wrestlers don't wear long pants. Wrestlers don't wear jeans. Backyard wrestlers wear jeans. Maybe that one guy in your indie fed that's not really all that trained and does, can't afford real gear. Maybe he wears jeans. That's fine. You can have one. Don't have a whole roster full of people in street clothes. Because you know what that sends a message to people? It says, oh fuck, he doesn't have to spend money on gear. Shit, I just put on my pants and call myself a wrestler. Yeah, right. Uh, Lawfan12 Revenge in the chat says, Personally, I was hoping for clean finishes, but it was all TNA overbooked finishes besides the opener. Well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, there was no, there was no, uh, there was no, like, after the bell, like, like, when they becomes, one problem I have with TNA is that whenever there's, like, a, 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 a like after the finish, like, they, there's another beatdown, the timekeeper just keeps ringing the bell. It sounds like a fucking train's coming into town, like, ding, 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 ding. So, oh yeah, I laugh that they give Ryback pyro sound effects, but no actual pyro. Because he does the whole feed me more, and then he goes like this, and then you hear a but there's no pyro. And then when he's in the ring and he does the, and their pyro sounds go off again, there's no pyro. How do I know this? There's no smoke. When there's pyro, there's smoke. I mean, you look back in early Raws when they used to set up the show and they had that giant pyro techniques go off, and then like the arena is like smoky, and then you can all oh, you can't hear the crowd because you can hear like the 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 suction fans like trying to suck all the air out or suck all the smoke out. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I say you uh, you gotta love. During Ryback's matches, where they pump that "Feed Me More" chant through the speakers, because ain't nobody in the crowd chanting for that. Um, uh, yeah, it was stupid. Here, here's the problem I have with the chairs and the stairs match. You're essentially just—it's a no DQ match, but you're just limiting it to one weapon. And I'm like, okay, what is to stop me? Let me see. If I'm in this match, I'll say replace right back with me. I'm against Kane. What's to stop me from not using a steel chair? What if I want to go underneath the ring and use uh, a table or a ladder? What's stopping me? It's not against the rules. It's no disqualification. I can do whatever the fuck I want. So, this is why I said in my predictions video, TLC, the pay-per-view, the theme has to go away. Because you try to have four DQ matches. And it's just not working. So yeah, Ryback, uh, Ryback wins. Don't care. Oh wait, did he win? I forgot. Here's how much I didn't care. Yeah, yeah, he won. He hit Shell Shock and won. I don't care. And as I'm getting ready for the main event, out comes Rusev. I'm like, oh shit, this match is still happening. <laughs> so yeah it's Rusev versus Swagger for the United States Championship yeah that ain't happening <laughs> Swagger ain't winning and he doesn't of course I have to say Rusev put uh, Swagger in camel clutch break his back fuck his ass make him humble and like he almost passes out but he gets up then he puts him in the ankle lock and then they just like a side kick on the outside Beats the count, takes another side kick, puts him back in camel clutch, and then bam. Um, okay, going back because um, sorry if I'm taking a while to get to these questions because uh, there's a 30, 30 second delay with Twitch. Uh, uh, Lawfan12 says uh, gimmick match pay per views need to go in general. They need to happen spontaneously like they used to, gimmick matches, that is. Totally agree. We need to get rid of the money in the bank pay per view now that we only have one world heavyweight champion. We need to get rid of Hell in the Cell, the pay-per-view itself, 
because that just forces one one or two matches that it doesn't need it. It just needs to happen like spontaneously. Like even though we had a Hell in a Cell pay per view and we had like two or three matches Hell in a Cell on that pay per view, we still had a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania with Taker and and uh, Triple H and Shawn as the guest referee. And that was probably the best Hell in a Cell match in a while. You know, non blood. Yeah, so Rusev retains, and I tweeted out. Now here's the thing: I tweeted out that, of course, Rusev won. He's being bred to Cena to be buried, because he will lose his first match by pinfall submission, because he has lost before. It's just not by pinfall submission. So like DQ count out doesn't matter. He will be submitted when. John Cena is ready for him. And then someone retweeted back to me. And I'll pull it up here. By the way, Red Punk, thanks for the retweet for the stream. Greatly appreciate it. Um, someone tweeted to me, Are you going to be one of those who will complain that Rusev was so great after John Cena quote-unquote buries him? No, I don't like him now. I don't care for, I don't care for Rusev. Not saying he's a horrible wrestler. It's just I, I've seen this. This is this is Ivan Drago in Rocky Four. They're just recreating that, and I don't care. Dolph Lundgren completely overcompens overcompenses um, uh, Rusev. Now Bridget Nelson uh, versus uh, C J Parker uh, Lana. Even in her heyday, when Bridget Nelson was gorgeous in like Red Sonja and Rocky IV and I doubt she did anything else because that's the only two movies I know her for CJ Parker still kicks her ass with that ass and I retweeted out um, actually during the Rusev swagger match um, a drunk fan flipped off security and he was told to leave and he tried to punch one of them out there's photos of this guy fighting security one of them is this large African American chick who actually got him in a headlock and pulled him out of the arena. That's badass. Alright. Final match. TLC match. Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt. Now, here's the other thing. What do you remember of TLC matches? You think of the Hardys. The Dudleys and Edge and Christian. If you want to talk about th singles, you think about like you know Edge and Flair or Edge and Cena. For the, for the for the belt, the key thing for these matches is that you have to fight for something. You have to fight for a like you have to fight for a belt or some type of contract. That's what makes ladder matches in general exciting this was for nothing this is this harkens back to two years ago when the shield debuted that was their first match and they took on ryback kane and daniel bryan all it was it's a, another term it's a, it's a different way of phrasing that this is a no dq match and this answers the question too because it says this is tlc tables ladders and chairs Dean Ambrose uses kendo sticks in this match. So does that mean he's disqualified because he's using a weapon that's not in the, the, the set list of this match? No. No. <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah. Um, I'm always looking for innovative spots. Um, Bray does one where he takes the kendo stick. And if you're familiar with the ring... You've got your turnbuckle and you got the ropes that extend out like that. Then you've got that metal part that connects it to the post. Now, to protect that post, you have like a thin, thin, thin piece of cloth to cover it up so it doesn't expose the metal. And kind of protect people when they're, you know, getting strapped on the top rope and they're hanging all by their balls. So, Bray Wyatt opens it up just a little bit and sticks the kendo stick in. And he Irish whips Dean Ambrose face first into it. I like that. That's innovative. When you can think of innovative stuff to do in these types of matches, I applaud that. 
what did I tweet out? Kindle Stick was awesome. Oh yeah, and also remember that Dean Ambrose came back from a life-threatening injury, a what, crushed lyrics, which normally would kill people. Like, would normally kill people, or at least have them laid up for several weeks to months. He's back in three days. They they never never ever bring it back. They just said, oh, he he attacked his throat. He attacked his throat with a chair. We, we don't. But like when they try to use medical terms that aren't accurate, they fuck up. Uh, yeah. So he Dean Ambrose proceeds to put Bray through several tables and leap off of several ladders. They did this spot where he took out an LCD TV. So probably something. Let me move the camera here. Probably something along the lines of that. This is my preview monitor for um, my uh, streams. If it can, I don't think you can really make it all that much. Right. Maybe, yeah. So here's my monitor. All right. So he gets that underneath the ring, and he looks at it, and he's like, "I see, I see ladders in the back there." I want to use those. I see a 25 foot ladder. I want to use that. And he uses that to take out Wyatt. And I'm like, okay, you've put the man through three tables, including the Spanish nails table. And then you throw him in the ring and you have that monitor and you're going to go and hit him with it, but it's still hooked up. Funny thing too is that um, um, it's, 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 it, it, they say it's under there for the technicians to test stuff. And JBL's like, well, are they, are they live under the ring? I'm like, well, uh, if you're a guy like Mysterio who likes to do spots and hide underneath the ring before the show starts, or if you're Hornswoggle and spend the whole time down there, yeah, you need that monitor to know what you're doing or when your spot's coming up. So yeah, Dean takes the, take, Dean takes the monitor and he goes to ram it, and he's just like, "Ah, oh, ah, oh, crap! It's still plugged in." Instead of being like the 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 smart person and unplugging the cables, unplugging the HDMI cable, he runs at it again, and it explodes in his face. I'm like, I "Don't think TVs and monitors are supposed to do that." But that sets up for Bray to just rush and hit Sister Abigail and win. And you know, I always I give gripe for Cena not selling. After he hit Sister Abigail and pinned Dean Ambrose and won, Bray Wyatt ain't selling shit. You went through three tables, maybe four. You've been smashed with several ladders. Had this been like 2K15 with the stamina meter on, you'd be crawling your ass over. You'd be clinging onto the ropes to get yourself up. I was just like, nah, whatever. Uh, big fat bubble in the chat. You do know that SmackDown is on Tuesday, so it was six days. It's taped on Tuesday, but it airs on Friday. I know it. I know it's a tape show. I know they tape everything on a Tuesday, but it's still airs on a Friday. Just like when they tape, like with with NXT, they tape four episodes in a row and air them over a month to a month and a half. And they say last week when last week was actually two hours ago. Or maybe an hour ago. That's you know that's you have to suspend you have to suspend some type of disbelief for a little bit. Although I heard this this week SmackDown's going to be live on Tuesday, not on the WWE Network, but I think it's in USA because it's going to be like WWE Week on USA. So it's Mon it, Monday's Raw, Tuesday's SmackDown, Wednesday's Tribute to the Troops, and then you can watch. Uh, the Condemned and one of the Rocks movies on y USA. Uh, so TLC, was this a good pay per view? No. Was this a bad pay per view? No. This was just. Eh. I honestly think, unfortunately, 
the one the the one the the the, the some of us that watched NXT Takeover our evolution enjoyed it immensely marked the fuck out for Finn Balor putting on face paint and scaring the fuck out of the ascension marking out to Hideo Hitami almost hitting the GTS like the crowd marked out watching two women wrestle like wrestlers and not like girls in a cat flight and watching two guys go toe to toe and tell a better story about how not to corrupt your values and stay true to yourself and you will win the title something that's been pushing on Cena for years which nobody gets behind and nobody believes because you know Cena will not turn heel so what's the point on even trying to tell this story with Sami Zayn you could believe it a little bit also the debut of Kevin Steen as Kevin Owens as a face getting his nose busted open and then turning on his friend at the end of the show yeah it may have tainted my view of this pay-per-view but that's okay because to be honest the only thing I like seriously take investment in right now is NXT you know why because those guys need it the guys that are on or on Smackdown they're already on the main roster they're already making money in the five and six figures why do they need my attention Let's give it to, you know, if you're, you know, you're a little kid and you want to give those guys your full on bridal attention and yeah, go right ahead. I'll stick with NXT because I enjoy those guys. It's almost fearful that I don't think anyone from the NXT roster wants to go up to Raw and SmackDown because they're just not going to be used. I know the Ascension is coming soon. Uh, it's going to take a while because they're still uh, feuding with Hideo Tommy and Finn Balor. Uh, spoilers for the next couple weeks of NXT, but yeah, they're they're still being feuding. Uh, what was I going to say now? I am looking forward to the Royal Rumble because the Royal Rumble match is always entertaining. Now the question I leave is, if you want to put it in the comments, for those of you watching on YouTube... Which, because they've been doing this the last couple of years. They've been letting an NXT guy come in and compete in the Royal Rumble. And maybe get a little bit of shining moment. But not that much. And even CM Punk last year told Rusev. He's like, don't worry about this. You're going to go back to NXT after this. And no one will remember this. And sure enough, they did. You know why? Because no one remembers Rusev from... That Royal Rumble match. They remember him coming up with Lana and doing all of his I love Russia bullshit. Boo this man because he hates America and loves another country. Uh, and they did that two years ago with Bo Dallas, but that never worked out for him. Because like, he feuded for like two weeks with uh, Wade Barrett and then he just got sent back down and became NXT champion. So there you go. I would like to see Sami Zayn, but that probably won't happen. If they're going to pick any one person for the Royal Rumble, I'd probably say Hideo Itami, maybe Finn Balor. They need some... Because like they, those those guys will probably get called up first before anyone else because they need some international flavor, especially with like Seamus Hurt on, on the shelf right now. And the fact that they have no real good um, Asian representation because they just fired Yoshitatsu and he was just useless the whole time he was there um purple freak says i don't even know why they keep smackdown around anymore exactly smackdown was at its best when the brand extension happened and paul Heyman was writing because raw sucked smackdown had smackdown had young up-and-comers it had brock lesnar it had hogan it had the rock before he went off and did another movie smackdown was killing it Raw had Triple H as the World Heavyweight Champion burying everyone. It also had that horrible Katie Vick storyline. So I was just like, do I want to hear that the way that Triple H is going to beat Kane is bring up, Kane, you're a murderer. I'm like, ah, what else is on? Holy shit, and Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle are going to town. This is pretty cool. I'll stay here. And I did. I never. I barely watched Raw. I went to the Raw and SmackDown tapings that happened locally here for us, and 
SmackDown by far had the better show. I appreciate all they did in between commercials for Raw when Stephanie came out to pipe pipe up SmackDown. Because she's like, you're going to see all these great stars. And then Vince McMahon came out and he's just like, I want you all to come tomorrow for SmackDown. Because I will reveal that Mr. America is Hulk Hogan. Because that's like the like the, the week before Mr. Amer- Mr. America debuted. Like, I am not Hulk Hogan, brother. Boo. I am Mr. America, dude. Boo. <laughs> and then we just learned to accept it. Anyways, this is the point of the review that I usually ramble on. So, uh... This is interesting. I like taking your guys' questions. I might do this again after the Royal Rumble. But then again, I need to know what my schedule is going to be for work because I don't usually get pay-per-views off. This has been, last couple of months has been a real treat to actually be able to sit home, watch the Survivor Series, and watch TLC. Uh, So yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for listening. Uh, For watching this on YouTube, leaving comments down below. Who you think from NXT will get called up to uh, compete in the Royal Rumble? And then get put back down to shuffle. Uh, hopefully they'll give them a little bit time to shine. Unlike they did with Charlotte on Monday. It's like, hey, we're going to have NXT Revolution. And Charlotte's going to defend her title. Oh, she just lost the natty in two and a half minutes. Oh, still watch the special. Anyways, guys. You guys have a good night. And, uh, yeah, TLC. I knew it wasn't going to be as good as TakeOver. Fact.